Good evening, Britannia, and hello to the rest of the world. Welcome back to 2C TV. Uh, last night we had an attack in Iran. The media were confused, and today the media and the international community are still confused. The whole thing has been chaotic, and in this video we're going to go through everything we know so far about what exactly happened. Let's get on with the show. All right, so today is a special day, ladies and gentlemen. It's the 19th of April, and it's the birthday of the supreme leader of the Islamic Republic, uh, Ali Khamenei. And, of course, on his birthday, he received a special present, a very banging present, a very explosive present. Um, <laughs> there was a bit of a situation uh, early this morning, late last night, let's just say, after midnight, uh, it was, I think it was a UK time, I think it was around 1am, 2am, that started. Um, everybody was a little bit confused. We didn't hear anything from the IDF and the Israeli government. The Americans spoke on behalf of Israel and leaked something, which uh, goes into the, everything that we're going to discuss together tonight in this live stream. So, we have a couple of videos from uh, the alleged attack the strike that happened in Iran, which caused absolute chaos. They closed down the airports and the airspace, and everybody ran away. And then a couple of hours later, everything was fine. First things first, let's go to the first video we had from Iran last night. So, that was the evidence of the sirens um, being sounded across the country. And then they said that uh, we've had a number of uh, missile attacks or drone attacks. Uh, they weren't even consistent with the reporting from Iran. Uh, but then they did confirm that uh, a site uh, in Esfahan, which was one of the largest cities after Tehran, the capital, was hit um, near the airport in Esfahan. Let's go to that video. So as you can see, it's not really clear, but that was a big cloud uh, that we uh, witnessed. Uh, we then heard that uh, the Iranian regime said we are under attack, right, at first. The Americans came out, briefed the media internationally very quickly that, yes, the Israeli told us that they're attacking Iran. Then we didn't hear anything from the IDF at all. Then the Iranian regime said the attack has failed. And we brought down, we shot down drones or whatever. And then they said the explosion was an attack. And then they came out and corrected the, the Iranians, saying, actually, the explosion was controlled. It was, it was up in the air. It, did, it didn't actually hit the ground. Following that, we also didn't hear anything from IDF again. But the Americans were talking a lot. Don't understand why the Americans were so interested in uh, letting everybody in the world know that the Israelis are coming, right? That's the interesting part. This is the next video that we have is actually uh, from the airport, uh, the Imam Khomeini airport, the main airport in the capital, Tehran. Let's go to that one. <laughs> So that was an announcement uh, at the uh, airport in the capital saying that the airport is now closed. You should all just go home. Uh, but after a few hours, uh, earlier today, uh, they decided to reopen it. And uh, the Iranian regime uh, announced that this was a success for the Islamic Republic and they stopped the Israelis. But then they said, we're not accusing the Israelis. Essentially, the Iranian regime decided to downplay it, right? Because they don't actually want escalation because they know they will be destroyed if they go directly head on with the Israelis. Mostly because the Americans will have to get involved and it will be a direct conflict and Iran will not survive. Uh, but having said that, why was it that we didn't actually hear anything from the IDF even afterwards, but we heard a lot from the Americans? Now, there are a number of theories about this. Number one, this might have been the attempt from uh, Joe Biden's administration and Pentagon to essentially leak it so that the Israelis will have to pull back and not actually carry out the full operation, whatever they had planned, for example. Or, second scenario, this was in fact 
the Americans are right. This was the IDF, but they were just testing the waters because, of course, they did test the waters uh, a, a few days ago when they said we're about to attack Iran. 24 hours, 48 hours, and they said we're coming, and we reported it. And then they didn't actually do it, and we said that's probably to test the waters, see the reaction from Iran, what's going on, the movement inside Iran. But this could also be testing the waters. Let's just send one drone, for example, uh, see what happens. And then they came out and said, actually, no, the, uh, uh, the site near the nuclear site was destroyed. It makes no sense. So the problem we have, we know that governments lie, political leaders lie everywhere, and they kill. The problem we have is that you cannot believe anything that comes out of Iran. Almost anything. Now, we know we don't trust the West, Western media, the American government and all this, or the Russians or the Ukrainians, whatever. Everybody lies. Propaganda is everywhere. But we can tell, we can tell that the Iranian regime, whenever they're excited about an announcement, they're probably lying. That's been the case usually. The Israelis have been very quiet. But it makes sense because the Israelis want to ensure that they have the backing of America for the Rafah operation in the south of Gaza first before they do anything against Iran. But so why would they jeopardize it? So what, where the, uh, the Israelis are actually planning to send even more drones and missiles last night into Iran and by Americans making the announcement early on on behalf of Israel, did that jeopardize the operation and they had to pull back? I want to get your perspective as well in the in the live chat to see what you guys think about this uh, because it could be anything. The, the fact that the Iranian regime are claiming victory, I don't think the, the Israelis care about the PR side of this because they're not really taking any responsibility. Um, but I don't think... There could, there could also be the third scenario, by the way, which is uh, this was, in fact, uh, the only attack that the, the IDF would do against Iran. This was just a signal, a message saying, well, we have to retaliate, but let's just de-escalate it. Because their priority should be the Rafah operation in south of Gaza. But if the Israelis wanted to do a, a, a gesture of retaliation or a gimmick, surely they could have done something even better. You know, a little bit harmless, but to send a strong message that we did hit Iran. They didn't even take responsibility when it was happening. They could have said... We've done the operation, we've done the retaliation, now we're even. They didn't say that, which makes me think that the real idea of retaliation hasn't actually happened yet. It's the only explanation. Now we can sit here and speculate and pretend to be uh, military experts, but this is just what we are seeing so far. We have to take it as it is. It's hard, it's hard to say, as actually Seth says in the live chat, it's hard to say for sure. It could be either scenarios, as you say, or something different. <clears throat> But it, it's just a confusing situation for everybody, including the media, because the, the mainstream media, I, 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 just, I was still awake. I actually posted on YouTube on the community tab for you guys about 4 a.m., 5 a.m. I was still awake. I woke up because of all the notifications and phone calls I was receiving from everywhere. And then I noticed, hang on, the stuff that we we're getting about this. I, I could have, for example, done a live stream at 6 a.m. immediately. But I was watching CNN and BBC and Sky. I was like... These guys don't know what they're talking about. There, there was a very interesting point about the coverage on the mainstream media, by the way. You're going to love this. I kept switching between BBC and Sky. Experts, experts on BBC News and Sky News made so many mistakes and errors. These are, the, these are supposed to be the experts, right? <clears throat> For example, where they had one person repeatedly saying that uh, Esfahan, the city that was hit allegedly, was actually in the north of Iran. It's not. It's in the middle. It's, all, it's not even in the north. And they had experts who kept saying IRCG instead of IRGC, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. What is IRCG? These people go on the mainstream media, the grown-ups in a room that we used to look up to back in the day when we only used to watch TV. We didn't have new media or YouTube. They, were, they didn't know what they were talking about. There was another one that said uh, they were kept claiming that Israel hit the Iranian embassy in Damascus directly last week. No, they didn't. You've seen the evidence. They hit an IRGC headquarters that is located next to the Iranian consulate in Damascus. The Iranian consulate is still open. It's not flattened, despite what the media is telling you. I don't understand why they still think we're stupid. I mean, some people are falling for it, but, but not everybody, not all of us. They're all insane. 
Bigman says um, the world has gone mad. Just seen the uh, breaking news and footage man on fire. Oh, what now? Oh, courthouse where the Donald Trump trial is happening and near protesters uh, who are demonstrating against the support for Israel. Everything is just going completely crazy now. Super chat time. <clears throat> Windy Gardner from America saying thank you for covering the truth. Well, we have to cover all angles and thank you, by the way, because when I was watching CNN and BBC and all these guys are like, firstly, they're not really telling you what is happening or even at least being honest, like the way I was that this this bit is an opinion or this bit is a speculation. They were telling what you what to think. They, they were talking at you. And that is a problem with the, with the corporate media. Uh, Austin, uh, thank you for your super chat. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, thank you for your support, Maya. Hearing a voice of reason and support makes this year tolerable. Lots of love from the Jewish community. And speaking of the Jewish community, we're going to make another short video later on, a couple of videos actually, about the disgusting stuff that was happening in the United Kingdom, especially with the police. Uh, some of you might have already seen on social media, the British police decided to confront a, a Jewish man who's part of, uh, who's in charge of the campaign against anti-Semitism organization. And then they made, he, the police officer said, you are at the, you're near the Islamist protest and you are, you look openly Jewish and they threatened to arrest him. We're going to talk about that later anyway, because that was a completely unacceptable behavior by the police. There's another story we're going to cover later on on Tuesday TV, which is about the police uh, <laughs> storming into someone's house who happens to be a Christian man uh, because uh, they were threatening him because of his religious views. Imagine if you go to someone's house because they're Islamic and say, well, your Islamic views are not acceptable. You're, you're not going to have that in this country. But with Christians, you can do whatever you want, apparently. We've been too soft and tolerant as Christians. My, uh, sorry to sidetrack. Uh, gotta love the suit, but tighten your tight. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't do it, uh, do it properly, by the way, because uh, I usually do double Windsor, but uh, I, I was in a rush, and I can't really can't be bothered fixing it now. I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> super chat from Stephen saying, "Is that flag from your flat?" Actually, it is. That small one. <clears throat> yeah, I brought that from the flag. Uh, from the flat, uh, we do have a big one. But we're still basically building the studio. By the way, this is uh, this is still studio. It's set. B or C, I don't know. Um, we have a massive flag as well, which we're going to put on the wall when it's ready over the next few days. Uh, thank you for the support, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> they may be just testing Iran's air defenses. Yes, that could easily be the case. But the issue is, which, which would make sense why the IDF and Israel didn't really uh, announce the responsibility at the time when it was happening. They said, we are coming. Because I think if they do it properly, they, they will announce, we are now attacking Iran. They didn't make any statements. Um, so that they could actually probably test their defense, air defense uh, systems and everything else. Um, but just, or just generally see, see, see them, monitor the maneuver and the movement across the country. Um, people mentioned obviously the tie and the, 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 the studio and the flag. I want to give a massive shout out. In case you don't know, we have launched our new website now, 2C.TV. And you can also register your interest to join uh, 2CTV+. Plus. The link is in the description. The, the, the website is absolutely beautiful and shiny. And it's been sponsored by Tad Media. Uh, the link is also in the description. If you have any requirements for web design or development, definitely check out Tad Media. They've been great supporters of 2CTV uh, and they've uh, obviously helped us build all this stuff. And hopefully in the future, we're also going to have an app and everything else. Uh, we're going to build it together and we've been too busy. It's been chaotic here the last uh, few days uh, as we launched this new website and the new shows. I haven't slept. I've lost all my money because we've basically invested everything into this, uh, despite the fact that people are still accuse us of being uh, funded by Mossad and CIA and Russia and China and Iran and Hezbollah, probably. Uh, <laughs> no one accuses me of getting funded uh, by um, the Vatican. I want to get funded by Vatican. That would be good. <clears throat> but uh, we are here. And I thought it's, it's seven o'clock. We're talking about doom and gloomy stuff about the, the attacks. But I think it's time. So cheers and happy Friday. <laughs> Thank you, Richard, for the beer in the behind the scenes. <clears throat> yes. So obviously, yeah, we have we have the new studio. We've been busy filming 
the uh, the upcoming shows for Two C T V Plus. We had Stephen Barrett, the barrister, uh, filming his first episode of uh, Due Process, which is a law show. It's very good. Debunking claims, the political claims, and of course teaching law uh, we have also filmed uh, Joseph Robertson's context which is an interview show uh, the, yesterday we had Matthew Goodwin on the show today we had uh, Lance Foreman we're just recording them now so that when we launch 2 TV plus over the next couple of well, a week or so uh, you can actually have access to all the library of all the educational shows the political shows and of course entertainment we're gonna have some cheesy content it's gonna be great you're gonna love it <laughs> or you're gonna hate it <laughs> I'm basically trying to use this website again, thanks to Tad Media, um, to create a one-stop shop. So you can actually just use that as your go-to place to find in breaking news and all the other stuff, the articles and everything else that you have. Broken profit, due process. <laughs> due process. <laughs> I still say due, it's easier. Where is Arbia? It's in Tesco. Go get it. <laughs> um... Peter Green says, uh, goes to prove that the old uh, that, uh, that that of an expert, ex as in has been, <laughs> as in a, a, a trip under pressure. That's true. Experts on the mainstream media. Uh, super chat from Marina from Israel saying, Zionist money incoming. I'm officially funded by Zionists because uh, people from Israel send us super chat support. Thank you. And Alex as well. Can you sell the Hamas or terrorist poster at... Oh, Richard, do we have the... Hamas a terrorist poster. Do we have one of those? I don't think we have. We have. We basically been going to these protests uh, and collecting. Uh, Rich has been collecting these Isla actually the Islamist um, signs and the placards. I don't think we have the Hamas a terrorist. Uh, unfortunately, we have to also steal some from the counter protesters next time. But we have all the all the pro Gaza ones. They're all over there. Uh, one day we're gonna actually have all of them in the background. It's gonna be great. And you can film us all being arrested. Yes, because we should all basically. <laughs> Carry the signs all at once. See if the police are gonna arrest every single one of us. Or not. Whoa, what's happening here? <laughs> Apparently, there's a problem with the with my um, focus. It's fine. We'll sort it out, guys. Um, <clears throat> Echoing says their thoughts about Turkey directly attacking Israel. I don't think they will. Um, the only scenario I could see that Turkey could get involved is if everybody gets involved first. Uh, hypothetically, Israel gets involved with the well directly target Iran. Iran retaliates. The U.S. will be forced. They're not a force, but they want to, um, to support Israel to get involved. And then Russia will have to support Iran. China will have to support Iran. And then Turkey, at the end, they will feel like they can play with the big boys. And Erdogan might start also sending some random missiles into Israel uh, through Syria. But I, th I still think the, the, the intent is to de-escalate. Uh, from the world order, uh, everybody's telling Israel not to do this, everyone's telling Iran not to do this, although the last person that told Iran not to do this was Biden, he said, don't do it, and Iran did it, <laughs> so not really sure if everybody is actually listening to the world order these days. Uh, Steph Fletcher, Steve Fletcher, thank you very much for your support, and also Bread of Comfort says, we Christians uh, are called uh, to even love our enemies, so that's why we have a soft edge, God bless. Yeah, but I, I, I would criticize it now. Um, the, the beauty of Christianity is actually becoming a bit of a problem. Surprise. Oh, no. Surprise, surprise, guys. We have a big announcement. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who's going to arrest me now? Where's the Metropolitan Police, guys? Oh, look what I'm holding. Treason, right? <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Richard. Uh, so, yeah, I didn't know we had this sign. But uh, so now that I've held the sign, I can expect the, the, the Met Police to, or the SWAT team to storm into the studio and arrest me immediately, right? Uh, we shall wait. <clears throat> yeah, we now have the breaking news that we already actually had one of you guys uh, reporting. Somehow the mainstream media only just got the update that uh, one of the protesters is on fire and he was handing out leaflets about Trump and Biden in America. Crazy. The whole thing is insane. <clears throat> well, this is knock, knock. It's the police. Oh, no. They're coming for me just for holding a sign. <laughs> Actually, this will be a better sign, a slogan on a sign. Hamas <laughs> a demonic evil. <laughs> yes. Facts are facts. <clears throat> Sophia says, I'm afraid uh, that's all the response. Biden leaked it precisely so that Israel won't be able to continue. That's what I thought as well, partly. It was exchange uh, for the ticket for, to Rafa. 
But now Biden will do everything to nullify it. Too. Yeah, they, I, 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 do, I still believe that too. As I said, the one scenario was last night attacking Iran. Test the waters. But as Sophia said, this scenario makes even more sense. That basically America said, you can do a tiny hit. We'll be in charge of announcing it. So you're not even taking responsibility to make yourself a bigger target. And we'll just get the Iranians as well to de-escalate and then say, we're even now. The funny thing is, this is basically a version of ceasefire, right? It's not even a real ceasefire because, yes, they might not be directly attacking each other anymore. For now. For now. But through proxies, they're still doing it. The Iranian regime funding Hezbollah, and Hamas, and all these guys, and who these... They're still attacking Israel anyway. The only place that's not been attacked is Iran. Is this a fair conflict where only Israel is being attacked every day through proxies of Iran? It's not like we have proxies of Israel attacking Iran. It's not a level playing field. I'm not really into creating conflict or condoning war, but it's, there's no level playing field. And that's the problem I have with this whole situation. But I think Sophia might be right. We'll find out within the next uh, couple of days or few hours, maybe. <clears throat> Aiden Ball says, uh, thank you for your super chat. If we all stand as one, we will make it. Uh, John o. London, uh, thank you very much. Uh, from uh, La London, sorry, I can't even see it. From Canada. Uh, and the uh, CIA says, uh, CIA, it's an invoice uh, from CIA, yep, from the boys upstairs, PSYOP development, brilliant. <laughs> Love the sign and the tie, by the way, good. I've been getting so many attacks today because of this tie, what's wrong with that? I know I haven't tied it properly, I, have to, I should do a double Windsor, but come on, leave me alone, it's Friday. I'm still wearing a tie at least. <laughs> All right. Someone said, like, Lacey, Maya wants his beer. I have my beer. Thanks to Richard. <laughs> oh. You're not going to see this on BBC News. All right. <laughs> uh, once again, big shout out. Uh, if you haven't checked out a new website, a new shiny, beautiful website, 2C.TV, the link is in the description. You can also register your interest to join 2CTV+, which will be launched very soon. Uh, and, uh, of course... Big, big shout out to Tad Media. I think you can see the name underneath that poster as well. An official sponsor of the new website, which has been really helpful and supportive. Uh, definitely, if you need any website design or development, uh, check them out. I'll put the link also in the description as usual going forward uh, so that you guys could uh, use that as well. Uh, let me just double check to see if we miss any more Super Chats or even any breaking news update on this issue. Otherwise... Uh, <clears throat> Hang on. Shade says, you look like Biden in that suit. How dare you? <laughs> I could have looked like anybody but Biden. Really? I used to be called a young Al Pacino. Not anymore. <laughs> anyway, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to come back uh, shortly with a couple of uh, short videos about what happened with the Metropolitan Police uh, disrupting uh, the Jews and Christians in our country. I'm Maya Tusi, and we are the media.